Thanks. Yeah, it's a pleasure to, to be back here. Um, yes, today I will be talking about a recent work that I did with uh, Jae Hoon Kim and Yoon Jin Kim. I think Jae Hoon was a student here in KAIST before, so, and Yoon Jin was a postdoc here at KAIST. So. Um, so, yeah, so let's start with a basic, uh, a, a classical problem in extremal. graph theory. So, so usually the setup is we have some uh, family of combinatorial objects with certain properties and then we want to optimize certain parameter on top over the objects in this family. So the, the very classical problem of this typing extremal problem we consider uh, the containment of a subgraph. Okay, so we, we fix so we look at, okay, first of all, just to remind myself, we say a graph is a subgraph of another if you can embed the vertex of, of, of H to G that preserve the edge adjacency of the pairs. So yes, this subgraph. And then we say G is H free. Uh, we mean that uh, G does not contain H as a subgraph, not necessarily induced, okay? So in this talk, I'm not talking about induced subgraph. So just containing H as a subgraph. Uh, so the classical type of problem called two-run problem. So the two-run problem, I think um, the first such result is proved by Mantel. So let me just state the result. So Mantel, prove in 1907 that if we consider all the n vertex graph g with the property that it is that is triangle free okay meaning that you don't contain three vertices they are pairwise adjacent in your graph then uh, he gave an upper bound on the size of the graph and he showed that all such graphs should have at most n squared over four edges so I will skip the floors and ceilings in this talk. This bound is tight because we can, we can realize this upper bound by considering balanced by part graph. Nowadays we call it Turan graph on two parts, right? So this is tight because of Turan graph. Let me just denote it by T2, T sub 2 of n. It's n vertex Turan graph on two parts. So basically they are balanced graph with all the edges across different classes. Right, so later it was generalized by Turan. So uh, I think that, um, yeah. So Turan generalized this in 1941 uh, to larger cliques. So here by clique, I mean a, a graph where every pair of vertices is ad adjacent. So this is a clique of size two. So he proved that if a graph is K, let's say KT plus one free, um, and n vertices, then this graph G, then E of G is at most, uh, I will just directly draw this graph instead. So he said it's better to, the best you can do is to partition the vertex set of the graph into two almost equal, uh, T almost equal parts, and then add all the edges going across. Okay? Uh, so these, uh, obviously there's no clique of size T plus one because by pigeonhole, if you have a clique of size T plus one, we should have two vertices in the same class. But e each class is independent set, meaning that there's no edges at all inside any class. So this is considered the birth of uh, extremal graph theory, the theorem of Turan. And a lot of these extremal type of problem studies, uh, if you have H free, uh, without having H as a subgraph, then what is the maximum size of the graph, the number of edges, okay? Originally, this was introduced by uh, coming from some number theoretical problem where they study, for example, the size of the largest sit-on set. Then Erdős, when studying this kind of problem, they have to consider largest graph without C4, without cycle of length 4, okay? So later, um, this type of problem become a, 
uh, attract a lot of uh, interest, so it become a whole area by itself. So there's a lot of extension, many extensions of this Turan type problem. Let me just mention one a famous result by Erdi Stone and Shimonovich. Okay, so they proved that, so they basically solved the, asymptotically the Turan type problem for all non bipartite graphs. So let me write down what they proved. So let me just first write the uh, definition. I would denote by this is the extremal number, n comma h is the maximum number of edges in the n vertex graph that is h free. Okay. Uh, at any point, if anything is not clear, please let me know. So yeah. So by this notation, we know that Mantel theorem says if you have triangle, this is m equals to n squared over 4 because it can be realized by the Turan graph. So uh, what, what, what did early Stone and Shimonovich prove? They proved that uh, this, extre this extremal number is determined asymptotically by another famous graph parameter, the chromatic number of the, of, of the graph. Okay? So they proved that uh, the extremal number of a graph is asymptotically Uh, roughly, the proportion of the, the edges is 1 minus 1 over the chromatic number minus 1. The chromatic number meaning that the minimum number of colors you need to color the vertices, such that adjacent vertices receiving, huh? what I'm talking about? Yeah, receiving different colors. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, right. So basically, yeah, basically we solve this problem. But if you pay attention here, if H is bipartite, meaning that you can partition the uh, vertex of H into two parts where all the edges go in between, or in other words, the chromatic number of H is 2. So when this is 2, this bound is not very meaningful, right? The, the whole term here becomes 0. So it becomes a degenerate problem. And the whole degenerate by part type, degenerate Turan type problem is, a, is still a, uh, it's a very difficult area because uh, uh, the smallest, uh, let me just give you uh, a problem here, for example, the, one of the, my favorite question is, if you look at three-dimensional cube, okay, this A vertex 12 edges graph, one of the major problem, we don't even know this one, the extremal number. So the extremal number of this guy is somewhere between n to the 3 half, so the power is somewhere between um, 1.5 and 1.6. So not to mention some nice estimate like this, just the, the, the exponent of n, we don't even know. So that kind of explains how difficult the, uh, the degenerate graph uh, case are. OK, so, so this is not what I'm going to talk about today, this Turan type problem. So what I want to talk about is a, a variation of this problem, first introduced by Shosh, OK, Erdish and Shosh. So if we pay attention to this uh, click problem of the Turan problem, if you look at Turan's theorem here, if it will be t in, when you will be a fixed size click, then the best you can do is to partition it into almost equal size and put edges in between. But this Turan graph has a very rigid structure, right? In particular, it has an independent set of size linear in the order of the graph. Okay? So basically, one of the motivation of this Ramsey-Turan theory is that what if one of the meta problem in extremal chromatories is you, you have some classical theorem. If we look at the extremal structure and we, we forbid something uh, that is in the extremal structure, can we improve the bound, right? So this is one of the first occurrence of this such kind of meta problem. Basically, they show as what if on top of being kt plus 1 free, we also require the host graph to have sublinear independence number. Okay, independent number means a, a set of vertices, the largest set of vertices you can find that are pairwise non-adjacent. 
Oh. Yeah. So I will denote by alpha of g is the independence number of a graph. This is the this is the maximum L such that you can embed the what? Wait, this is not correct. <laughs> okay, such that KL is is in the complement of G. Okay, this this is correct. Uh, this yes, <laughs> this is just a group of vertices <laughs> that are pairwise non-adjacent. Okay, uh, yeah. Right. So so now here's the question. Okay, the birth of this whole theory of uh, ramsey turan theory. So Shush, Shush asks, what if what happened? when we in additionally require the host graph uh, to have alpha of g to be little o of n. Suppose g is n vertex graph. Okay? During this talk, little n would be always the number of vertices in the graph. Um, yeah, then can we how, how does it affect the edge density, right? And for sure, it will drop uh, at most as much as before, right? But how much you affect it? So this is the at the beginning, right? So let me give you some formal definition. So the definition, let's define RT stands for ramsey turan of a host graph. Is, the host graph is, has n vertices. We for, for be h is a subgraph as usual, but the additional thing for, uh, on top of the extremal number is the last parameter m. So this is the maximum size of m vertex graph without h is a subgraph. And in addition, this this graph m vertex graph should have independence number m most m. Okay. And most m. So the the many results in this area. The most classical case is to consider when m is little o n. So to define things more precisely, let, let me define you more formally. What what do I mean by little o, little o of n? Okay. So we can define, but but in general the intuition is, the in general when m is large, meaning that it, it's close to n, then it's more Turan like this problem, okay? And when m is small, usually it's more Ramsey-like. Some Ramsey flavor will kick in. So we will see some example later. Um, let's define formally. So, so first of all, we can cons this is well defined. So the little o m, little o n is not well defined. So, but this is well defined. Uh, we can define. Ramsey Turan number of h when the when the independence number is at most some small delta times n. Okay, independence number at most delta times n. Let's normalize it by n square. Look at the density. Call this rho of h delta. Okay. Then we will take delta goes to zero. This is what I mean by little of n. Then we define this Ramsey Turan density. Rho of h to be the limit when delta goes to zero of rho h delta. Okay. Then, then we traditionally, conventionally, we write Ramsey Turan of n h little o n. Conventionally, we write it as rho of h n square plus little o n square. There's a plus little o n squares because, uh, yeah, we cannot write it precisely here. So, is there any question about the definition? Uh, does the limit even exist? Yeah, we can show a standard argument shows the limit exists. Yes. 
Do you need a limb suit or the limb is fine? Um, for limb is fine, yes. Yeah. Uh, so for this, right. So this is what we mean, uh, little o n. Okay. So now let's do a, a small example to get used to this new parameter. Okay. So the so re recall the extreme one number for triangle is n squared over four, roughly, right? Okay, so the density is one quarter. One quarter times n squared. So what about triangle little o n? Meaning that uh, now, now I give you a triangle free graph and the independence number is little o n. W what is the edge density? And it's not hard to prove that this graph is sparse. It has zero edge density. So here's a two line proof. So this is the graph g that, that we given that is triangle free and independence number little n. We look at any vertex v and look at its neighborhood. It has to be independent at the neighborhood simply because it's triangle free, the graph. Okay? And because of this, this shows that the maximum degree of the graph, which I denote by capital delta of g, is at most alpha of g, right? The independence number of the graph, which we know is little o n. Then the size of the graph is at most delta of g times n over 2. So it's little n squared. So this shows that by imposing this additional condition that the graph should have sublinear independence number, uh, the triangle density drop from 1 quarter to, to 0. OK? Then, um, then this, the, for all clicks, this was solved by Erdish and Shosh. This is in 69, 1969, where they proved that if you look at the little o n case, I, I normalize, normalize it, k2s plus 1. This is 1 half s minus 1 over s. Okay, so if we take s equal to 1, this is a triangle. And we've seen that for triangle, this is zero here. The ramsey turan density at little o n is zero. Just to get use of the, this notation. Or oh, I can write, this is equivalent to say that RT of, this is equivalent to say that RT of n, k2s plus one, little o n, equals to this. Okay. So this is not hard to, to prove the upper bound. And the, let me just show you the lower bound. How do you construct the graph with this many edges? That is k2s plus 1 free and has independence number little of n. So basically, Erdich has a result which says that there exists a graph that is, has arbitrarily large fixed girth and uh, large independence number, meaning that the Sorry, large chromatic number. The meaning that the independence number is little o n. Okay, so then, so Erdős proved that there exists an n vertex graph. I just write the consequence such that uh, the girth of G is large. Okay, larger than any for any t, there exists n naught such that yeah, okay, larger than t, and the independence number of G is. Little, we can quantify it. Let me not quantify it for some t constant. So, um, yeah. Then what you do is for two s plus one, we we put v one v two s classes, okay? Uh, s what classes? S minus one classes. S minus one classes, okay? Then we put all the edges in between five, two, one. Yes. Two, wait, two S classes. Yes. And we put, so we basically build a two round graph on S parts, okay? Then inside every part, inside every part, we will put this high girth graph. In particular, it's triangle free, and independence number 
this little n, right? So because each little part independence on little n, the resulting graph is also little n. You, we put all this graph f, put it inside here. So we satisfy the little n independence number condition. Let's check if it's k2s plus 1 free. How do we get k2s plus 1? By pigeonhole, we should have uh, hmm, okay, let's see, how do we get it? Uh, because each part is triangle free, we can get at most two, an edge as a clique from each part. So all together, we can get at most, the largest clique you can get is K2S, right? Yeah, so you don't have K2S plus one. And it's easy to compute. This is precisely the edge density of this graph because this graph F has little n square edges. This is the lower bound. But the problem for even click is much, much harder for even click, turns out. So for even click, this is quite difficult. Um, the first open case, of course, let's look at K4, okay? So Sam already, he looked at the even click K4. He showed that this at, the density is at most one over eight. He gave some number using regularity lemma, one of the first application of regularity lemma. But the lower bound, it was not known. So it was not clear whether you can even find a dense graph that is k4 free and independence, independence number little n. Okay? Uh, this was in summary. So this later, Bolobash and Erdish, they come up with the ingenious construction. I, th I think it's one of the most beautiful construction in extremal graph theory, matching this upper bound. So they prove that, in fact, so yeah, again, this is the normalized version. So basically, they prove that by Samarides' result, every graph that is k4 k free and little o n independence number can have at most n squared over eight edges. And they managed to construct a graph that is n vertex little o n independence number and and uh, that is k4 free with edge density n square with density one over eight okay n square over eight so r very roughly speaking their construction use high dimensional sphere the property that most of the mass is centered around the uh, equator right so you can think of the hypercube if you look at hi the boolean lattice hypercube most of the weight is centered in the cent in the center layer okay so basically very roughly speaking they look at high dimension sphere and then it's a uh, within within each part so you have two parts a and b within each part you connect two you you distribute n over two vertices uniformly at random so uniformly distributed you connect a pair if they are almost antipodal okay you do the same here and then how do you connect cross pairs you connect a cross pair if a point here, U, is in the hemisphere of this, of this point, then you connect it, okay? Then it's not, then one of the famous, uh, one of the very crucial observation is, this graph is not, is K4 free. Each bar is triangle free, that's very clear, because the edges bounce around like this. It's impossible to get triangle. But why is K4 free? One of the intuition, geometrically, you can think of it like this, right? If you have four points like this, then it's impossible to have pairwise distance at least square root two. This is one of the, it's not the explanation, just kind of intuition. Still, this construction looks very mysterious to me, like it's like a magic. So anyway, I, this is one of the even click. So for, so in general, the even click was also, also later resolved. Uh, so they prove this was proved by in eighty three by Erdős, Heino, Shosh, and Samaradi. Samaradi. Okay. So they they basically solved the even click problem. The Ramsey Turan density in this case. is some number like this. 
So just let me remark that the inside each part is sparse, and the cross density is one, one half. That's we get n squared over eight. So this lower bound construction, very roughly speaking, you start with Bolobas Erdős graph with density one half, and then whenever you, this this is for K four. For K six, you add the additional part, make it completely adjacent to the previous, and start growing like this. And inside, we put the high girth graph with sublinear independence number, very roughly speaking. And you keep growing when the clique gets bigger, for even clique. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, before I mention the what we're doing, let me also mention the open problem. So this area is also difficult. One of the first open problem, a small graph that we don't understand, is the blow up of K3, K222. Okay, it looks like this. So this is K222, three classes, each class of size 2, and all the edges going across. The ramsey turan number for this graph with sublinear independence number, we don't know if it's dense. Okay? So when this upper bound, n squared over 8, uh, but we don't have any lower bound. So it's not clear if this is known. Okay? We know that so not sure if this upper bound is tight or yeah. So so this I quite like this problem, but we don't know how to do it. Okay. And right. So we will move on to another function. So if you look at this row of h, the ramsey turan density, it captures the limit value of this ramsey turan problem, right? So uh, the definition is here. So basically, we, we look at graphs with independence number little delta times n, and we take delta goes to zero to get this little o n. So for, the, for this function, rho of h delta, it's, it captures more the transition, how it goes to the limit value, right? So, um, right, so we know that for example, uh, let me just write it down. Um, so, Fox Lo and Zhao is in 2015. So, among others, they proved that if we look at this much finer function, okay, instead of the limit value, if you just look at uh, independence number is at most delta n. We know that eventually, as delta goes to zero, it goes to one, eight, one over eight by the result above. But how does it go to one over eight? What's the what's the term depending on delta, right? Is it exponential in delta, polynomial in delta? So basically, what they prove is this equals to uh, one over eight. It turns out that it, it goes to one over eight uh, linearly in delta. Okay big theta of delta, linearly, linearly in delta. Um, right, uh, so, yeah? Row, yeah, row, yeah, my row is not so, yeah, <laughs> row, yeah. Uh, hmm. I don't know why I wrote this, or oh, maybe in the paper we use this, this row to distinguish the normal row, so it looks something like this, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, right, 1 over 8 plus, yeah. So this means that you can find two constants, C1 and C2, such that this number is bounded from above by 1 over 8 plus C1 times delta, and bounded from below by 1 over 8 plus C2 times delta, okay? So they know the speed this function goes to uh, 1 over 8. And Somewhat surprisingly, this can be determined, actually. This is a recent work by Luder and Christian Ryer. So they, they basically determine this much finer function, showing that, uh, let me just write it down, what they prove. This row, K3, 
K2S minus 1 delta equals to 1 half S minus 2 S minus 1 plus delta. And for even click, they show that this is 1 half. Even clicks behave slightly differently, which is surprising, but also kind of within expectation because we know from before that the even click is harder. So you, there's a, a second lower order term here for even clicks. So basically they determine this for all the clicks, capture how we trans transit to... Uh, so let me just... So no little comes, this is pretty yeah. Nice yeah, oh, plus little o one, right? Uh, because we normalize this by n square. So yeah, so if we want to write it precise, oh, let me write it in this term. So basically what they prove for K4, for example, delta n, right? So this means the, uh, yeah, maximum number of edges, K4 free, independence number at most delta n equals to, in fact, they prove it's at most uh, n squared over eight plus delta n squared over two, precisely equality. And for infinitely many n, the lower bound can be also achieved. But some, you, you can get arbitrarily close. So this is quite a satisfying answer for this, uh, for clicks to capture this much finer uh, function. Now, <coughs> right, so um, what I want to talk about is a multicolor version of this problem, okay? So what is the multicolor? We can define similarly the rem. So let me just say, give a definition. We say that G, before we define single color, it's H3. Now we can define multicolor. We say G is H1 to HK3. If, if G is H1 to HK rem Z, right? Meaning that you can use k colors to color the edge set if there exists a k edge coloring such that in the ith color class it's hi free okay in other words when you have single color you don't partition the edge set g is h free means the whole edge set of g is h free when you have k colors, you partition the edge set into k subgraph, k uh, classes, right? Each, then the i's color correspond to h i, the i's forbidden graph. So, is that clear the notation? So then, we can consider this uh, multicolor case. So, for the multicolor case, uh, early and Shosh, they show that this is 79. They prove that uh, if you look at row K3, K3, for the Yeah, I don't have enough time, but let me just remark before this result that for the multicolor case, uh, it's proved also by this group of people, Erdős, Haino, Shosh, Samarody, and also Shimonovich. They basically show that the ramsey Tura number for cliques, uh, multicolor case, is determined by some variant of Ramsey number, okay? So then they look at a specific two-color case when you forbid triangle in each classes, and then uh, independence number is at most delta, delta n, okay? They prove that this is one quarter plus theta of delta. Basically, one of their conjecture says, is it true that uh, there exists a C such that rho of K3, K3 delta, equal to one quarter plus C times 
delta. Is it also linearly with a fixed constant c? This is their conjecture. Okay, so uh, let me first give you some lower bound construction, which is which is easier to start with to understand. Hmm. So for the lower bound, we need a result of Brent. Okay, so what did he prove? He proved that uh, if we look at some nd graph, this kind of graph with the property that g is n vertex d regular, meaning that every vertex has degree exactly d, and uh, independence number is also d, and triangle free. Very special graph. Okay, the whole graph is triangle free. The whole graph is d regular. Independence number is d, meaning that the neighborhood of every vertex is a maximum independent set, right? Because neighborhood is independent set. It is triangle free. So what he proved is, uh, if you look at such special graph, it does not exist for all, all pairs of n and d. But if you look at this delta, or let me use a different symbol, gamma. If you look at what kind of uh, gamma you can realize this n d graph, he proved that this gamma is dense in the interval 0 to 1 third. So he proved that So, so what, I, what it means is just that you pick any rational uh, gamma in between 0 and 1 third, then I can find the graph that is gamma n regular, triangle free, and independence number at most gamma n, asymptotically. Okay? So, yeah, so whatever, whatever it means is that uh, for any delta in 0, 1 third, rational, say, uh, no, dense, dense means, okay, uh, okay, let me just write the corollary. For any delta in between 0 and 1 third, we can get uh, uh, almost delta n regular graph, delta n regular, an independence number triangle free, an independence number at most delta n plus minus little n. This is the corollary, okay? You can find triangle free graphs with a, a nice edge count and also control on the independence number. We will use this result. Now, here's the lower bound construction. Uh, for large n, yes, yeah. Sufficiently large, yeah. So, uh, right. So, let's do for K3, K3, okay? For K3, K3, we can do something like this. We take the two-run graph on two parts, okay? And we add all the edges going across. And we color it red. And inside, in each part I said inside, but this graph still has huge independence number, right? We want little o n independence number. Inside, we put this graph. That's uh, delta n, almost delta n regular independence number and most delta n. So inside, we put this branch graph. Inside here. So w what is the size of this graph? It's easy to compute. The number of red edges is n squared over 4. The number of blue edges, because it's delta n regular, so it's delta n squared over 2, minus some lower order term. Sometimes this is just dense, right? Maybe we miss a little bit. So this gives us a lower bound of triangle triangle free graph with independence number little o n. Why independence number little o n? Because of, oh, sorry, delta n, because of the branch graph. And this is triangle, triangle free because the red graph, of course, is complete by part graph, yeah? And the blue graph is two disjoint copy of triangle free graph. So this is for K3, K3. And we can do just 
play around this construction a little bit. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, if we have K4, K4, uh, sorry, K3, K4, let me use blue for the first forbidden graph and red for the second forbidden graph. Then we can do the following. Okay. Again, inside all these parts, we all put this branch graph. Okay? That's a triangle free graph independ independence number delta n. So we satisfy the independence number requirement. And the number of edges we can get here is n squared over 3 plus, again, every vertex is roughly delta n degree. So delta n squared over 2 plus minus little n squared. This is the size of this graph. And if we see this graph is K3, K4 free because for the blue graph, it consists of disjoint copy of these two. This is a complete bipartite, triangle free. Up here, branch graph is triangle free. Okay? For the red graph, it's K4 free. Why? How do we get a K4? We cannot get vertices from these two classes simultaneously. So let's focus, suppose we pick vertices from this side. We cannot get two vertices from this class, right? Because this is all blue in here. So you can only take one. That means you should have a triangle here. But we know branch graph is triangle free. So this graph is K3, K4 free, according to this coloring. Okay? Now, let's do one more example, and then we'll state our main result. K3, K5. Then here, the Ramsey flavors start to kick in. Okay? So I, I say that we can get the lower bound like this. 2n squared over 5 plus delta n squared over 2. Okay? 2n squared over 5 corresponding to 5 partite 2 run graph. So what we're going to do here now is like this. Again, inside we put this branch graph. Let me just call it, yeah. And we use this Ramsey coloring for the blow up of K5. Okay? Uh, blue graph, it's a blow up of C5, is K3 free. And red graph, why is K5 free? Let's take a look. Uh, because red graph, if you just use the cross edges, is blow up of C5, is triangle free. So you can only take two classes to pick the vertices, to build a clique. If you pick two classes, then by pigeonhole, three vertices fall into one class. That requires a triangle, but we know it's triangle free. So this gives us a lower bound. So our first main result basically proved this conjecture. So it can be viewed as a multicolor extension of the result earlier I mentioned by Raya and his student, Luder. So we show that, in fact, this is tight. n squared over 4 plus delta n squared over 2. So the constant c here, we prove that this equals to 1 half. So we show that yeah, for the K3, K3 problem, it's 1 quarter plus 1 over 2, delta over 2, sorry. I normalize it here, okay? 1 quarter plus delta over 2. We prove the matching upper bound. And we also solve it for K3 and K5. Uh, delta is sufficiently small. This also appears in early work. We, uh, we require delta to be sufficiently small. Yes, thanks. So we prove matching upper bound. But in fact, uh, yeah. But actually, this is not correct. Okay? Actually, we can get a little bit more. We can add an additional term here for the K3, K4 case. For this. So, these two, 
basically what we do is we take some two run graph and put it inside this branch graph. And this naturally we would like to do the same, right? This is what we've been doing here. But in fact, we can do better than this. Okay? So um, in some sense, it's surprising but not surprising because we know in the even click it behaves differently by earlier this Luder and Ryers result. But I want to mention that even though even click, but there in single color case for, for, for the even click, this single color case, even click, the lower order term, they are the same, right? It's always minus delta square over two for all even click. So I want to remark that this is not the case for two color case. It's quite different because I will give you a lower bound construction for K3, K6, which exhibit the different lower order term, bigger lower order term, the quadratic term there. In this case, uh, we don't know how to do it, but we conjecture that this lower bound construction should be typed. So first, let me give you the construction, a better construction than this one, okay? How can we do more than this? This uh, three delta, square over 2. So again, we look at k3, k4, in this case. Okay, so what we do is very similar, but we will modify a little bit. Um, So, right, this is what we're going to do, okay? We will start with, again, n over 3 vertices here, n over 3 vertices here, but up here, we do it slightly differently, n over 3 minus delta n vertices, okay? And we put inside, again, this branch graph, branch graph, okay, this is branch graph with delta n regular triangle free independence number delta n same here same here just that the number of vertices is slightly different okay everything else is the same this is n over three vertices but this is n over three minus delta n vertices but we put because uh, delta is sufficiently small by this branch result the graph exists at least asymptotically we can match almost the size okay now um, yeah, then we do the same here. We color inside here blue, here blue, red, 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 okay? So, so far it's the same as before, but now what we're going to do is, we, by Brand's graph, we know that there's an independence set inside of size roughly delta n, right? Let's call it y. We pick an independence set y of size delta n. Now, we are still delta n vertices short. We need to add another delta n vertices. So we kind of make a clone of y. So I'm, we, I make a set x of size delta n. Okay. X is another delta n vertices set. This will behave exactly the same as y in the top part. What do I mean? So, yeah, for every vertice, we don't add any edges inside. We leave it independent, y. Now, uh, x in x, leave it independent. Now you pair up the vertices one by one, x and y, they have the same cardinality. Then the corresponding vertices, say x1 and y1, you look at y1's adjacency, you make x to have the same adjacency. So make them twin of each other, okay? So you connect them in a similar way. Now, how, now, and then, so far we don't gain anything yet. The gain comes from adding these additional edges. And then two step. Step one, add the twin x, make them the same adjacency as y. Step two, add all the edges x and y in between. But now we have to color them properly. So what we will do is we will color these new additional edges, x, y edges, red. But this screw up something because we can take a pair here, red pair, and take a red edge down here. This gives you a red K4, right? Oh, also, I will add all the edges from x to the two sets down here. So what we're going to change is we would modify all the edges from x to this set blue, but still red going here, okay? 
And then here, still red going here, but I modify the edges from white to the right hand side, uh, blue instead. Okay. So then, if you take a pair red, we cannot take a pair down here. Because one of the endpoints is either in X or Y, right? Then one of the endpoints has blue edges to that set. Very roughly. But you can check all the cases. And all these edges are still blue as before. Okay? Then if you calculate this graph, it gives you this additional lower order term. And we prove also the matching upper bound and for this. So um, this is our first main result. Um, right, for K6, we have a construction, but it gets quite complicated. And I'm running out of time. Let me just skip this. If you're interested, you can ask me after. Let me mention our second main result. Uh, Yeah, let me just mention that for K6, we have a construction which we believe is tight. It's at least some two round number, uh, 5 over 12, I think, plus delta over 2, plus 2 delta squared. So this lower order term is changing uh, because of this two color. So there's some Ramsey flavor in it. So this is changing. So very quickly, um, so as I mentioned before, if the bound on the independence number is closer to n, little o n, this is still very close to Turan type problem. But if we reduce it to smaller function of n, then more Ramsey flavor will come in. So in particular, Erdős and Schorsch, they're proving 69 that if you look at Ramsey Turan number of let me just mention a specific case. There are also a lot of results, but let me mention this specific case. Um, they asked, actually, whether, whether uh, this is little o n squared. Okay? So if you consider a K5 free graph, and you say that the independence number of the host graph is little o of square root n, okay, then this graph cannot be dense. That's their, what they ask, basically, they believe. So, um, so actually, this is easy, lower bound. This is easy because we can, how do you get lower bound? Well, I give you a construction, a graph that is K5 free, whose independence number is smaller than some large constant times square root n log n with this many edges, right? This is how we get lower bound. So now I give you a lower bound. I take n over two vertices on each side, add all the edges, okay? Inside, you can add this Ramsey graph. So for example, uh, Jongham Kim, I say his name correctly. He proved that um, uh, there, there exists a Ramsey graph, meaning that he proved that there exists a graph uh, yeah, that is triangle-free with independence number at most some large constant c times square root n log n. Okay? So a graph put inside here, an n vertex graph that's triangle-free, and independence number is at most some large constant times n square root log n. Is it the right direction? Mm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then we satisfy the independence number condition. And this is K5 free because each part is triangle free, right? Okay. So earlier question, basic, earlier short question is, if you drop this a little bit, then we will have a phase transition here then the graph suddenly has to be sparse. That's his question, okay? Uh, the first progress on this problem is by Sudokov in 2003. So basically, Sudokov proved in 2003 that if you require a slightly stronger condition on independence number, then the graph has to be sparse. So he almost solved this problem. He proved that if you look at n vertex K5 free graph with independence number 
square root n over some some function slightly smaller than square root n, then this is little n squared. Okay? Slightly smaller than square root n. So what is this function? This is smaller than square root n, but bigger than any n to the one half minus epsilon. Okay? So it's slightly smaller. So this function is in between these two polynomials. Okay? Now, uh, so this was finally solved in a strong, stronger form by Balak, Hu, and Shimonovich, 2015. They proved that, in fact, the original question is correct, but the stronger form is even correct. It becomes sparse already when you take a small enough c. So he proved that Ramsey Turan number of n, k5, little o of n square root n log n is little o of n square. Okay? So when the constants, when you take a very small constant here, then the graph cannot be dense. Okay? So the phase transition already happens at this. So this is no coincidence because this is precisely the inverse function of Ramsey number triangle versus click, right? So actually, the proof also utilizes this property. So in their paper, they proved that. So another second main result is that in their paper they proved that k8 here is at most two n squared over seven, and at least this is easy to show. Bigger than k7, right? Because forbidding this is a weaker result. This is n squared over 4. So basically, they asked whether the k8 at this transition point equals to k7, if the equality holds here. So there's a gap of 2 over 7 and 1 quarter. So our second main result basically says that this is yes, the answer is yes. So we show that this indeed equals to n squared over 4. Okay. So, yeah, I think I'm running out of time. There's still a lot of other uh, related stuff, but I will stop here. Yeah, thanks.